Uh, hi, hi. Sky just opened up like a faucet in two minutes. I was soaked. Being rumpled never hurt a politician, you know, Frank. <laughs> That's what they tell me, yeah. Oh. Anything new? Yeah, I spoke to Dean. How'd it go? Look, Frank, I'm not sure, but I think everything's all right. I told Dee that uh, you were worried that she might be in some kind of trouble, and she swears up and down she isn't. She does, huh? Yeah. And then I went over with her how uh, a politician's wife is like a, like a preacher's wife. The people are always looking for flaws in a character, you know, and uh, how important it is that they don't find any. And what'd you say to that? Well, Frank, she insists that nothing's wrong. She swears up and down she loves you, and she wouldn't do anything to hurt you or your campaign. <sighs> yeah. Now, Frank, as for this unsigned note, saying your wife is up to something. Frank, it's gotta be some crank. Now, we're letting some coincidences make more of it than perhaps we should. Da, I hope so. Come on, son. What kind of person would send a man a letter saying, do you know where your wife is when you're out campaigning without even having the courage to sign his name? Huh? It seems to me the only way to put our suspicions to rest is to finally meet the Sheila. That's the ticket. And I want to get it over with. I'm beginning to feel like a rat wandering about Dee all the time, especially after the way she's been pitching in these last few weeks. Aha! Uh -huh. I thought I heard your voice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ooh, you're all wet, but I love it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> it's fun. Uh-huh. It's a nice way to be greeted. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Say, uh, D? Mm? I got my schedule pretty much in hand now. Could we have that Chinese dinner that you and Sheila are gonna make? Sure. When? Uh, you pick the time. Uh, you pick it. Uh, tomorrow night? <laughs> no, we can try. Good. Let's do it. Okay, well, I want to get everything together just as planned. And in order to do that, well... Call Sheila, and uh, we'll have to go shopping. Now, don't worry. I promise you, I will not disappoint you. Come on, Frank. You see, that didn't bother her at all. It's just possible we may be wrong about this whole thing, huh? I hope so, Doc. father wants to move on. Stay here with me. Marry you. But this week... Aiden is really his son. Don't you think that Lucky deserves to know about this? Will his ex turn his life upside down? Watch General Hospital weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. This week, live on The View, we have the sassy Betty White co-hosting with us. That is going to be a hoot. Milking it for all of yes. the world. <laughs> Plus, Rob Lowe. Can't wait to hear what he has to say. And the very funny Amy Poehler. This week, live on The View on ABC. Every morning, all across America, women have discovered the secret to a great day. Because they've discovered the power of Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion. The only one that nourishes with active natural's oats. It's clinically proven to seal in moisture for a full 24 hours. So skin looks and feels beautiful all day. For a better day, every day. Discover the power of America's number one daily moisturizing lotion. Only from Aveeno. And discover the power of active naturals. I'm uh, just a piece of dust living at the corner of J and K, spending too many nights alone at the space bar. Will love ever find me? Oh, yes! What about you? Swiffer attracts dust. Swiffer 360 Dusters gets in hard to reach places. It picks up two times more dust than a feather duster, using thousands of fluffy fibers to lock dust away. You're just my type! <laughs> Swiffer gives cleaning a whole new meaning. 
having diabetes really changed my life, but it doesn't stop me from enjoying great food. Hi, I'm Nicole Johnson, and I've had diabetes for years. I still enjoy delicious food, guilt-free, with the recipes in my free diabetes cookbooks, and so can you. If you have diabetes and are on Medicare, you qualify for not one, not two, but three free cookbooks. Call 1-800-798-0909. It's hard to resist the food we love, but not when you have these free diabetes cookbooks filled with dozens of yummy recipes for desserts, main dishes, snacks, and more. Plus, get this free guide to planning delicious diabetes-friendly meals. So call now and get cooking. For your three free cookbooks and free meal planning guide, call 1-800-798-0909. That's 1-800-798-0909. Roger, please, would you just listen to me, please? But you're soaked through. Let me help you off of these wet things. You grab me the minute I walk through that door. Now, just stop and just listen to me. But uh, can you blame me? I see you so seldom for wanting to... Well, well, yeah, you don't even care what I want. All you care about is what you want. I was hoping that I was thinking for both of us. But you weren't. Okay, Sheila is coming for dinner tomorrow night at 6.30. Big wow! All right, now, I have the recipes, and I'm going to do that incidental shopping that you told me to do. Right, you've got to get some soy sauce and some mustard and uh, an appetizer first. Okay, I was thinking that I would get um, frozen egg rolls, and then uh, Sheila would be preparing the duck and uh, all the other main things, right? And then... To your dismay and embarrassment, Sheila never turns up. Wrong. Wrong? At exactly 7 o'clock, Sheila calls. She suddenly had to rush off to Chicago. Uh, look, Dee, I, I know this, this was my idea, but isn't that taking a big chance? I mean, what if uh, Frank answers the phone or he wants to talk to Sheila? Well, see, that's why you have to call exactly at 7 o'clock. Okay, and I'll be standing by the phone. Now, Frank might not even be home. But if he is home, I'll make sure he's nowhere near the phone. I will call you at exactly 7 o'clock. Roger? You won't forget, will you? No, Dee. I mean, um, you won't make any trouble, you know, for me by not phoning. I said no. D, I love you. And you know that I want you with me because I believe that I'm better for you than any man in this whole world. I get a funny feeling when you say that. I feel tingly and afraid. I'm hoping that someday you'll feel the same way. And I think the best way for that to happen is for me to prove to you that I can be your loving friend. I think... What I need now more than anything else is to have a faithful friend. Right now? Something's awfully funny. I, I think Frank is, is suspicious of me, and he, he talked to Johnny. Johnny's been asking me a lot of questions. Well, what kind of questions? Well, like, am I in trouble? And, and if I'm in trouble, that, that I could go to speak to him. Did he happen to mention what sort of trouble? I think it must be something like, like charge accounts. Oh. You see, Johnny kept on saying something about a politician's wife is, is like a preacher's wife. Everybody's just waiting to see if she does something wrong. Well, hooray! Roger, I am scared! Right, honey, I'm sorry. Okay, that's why you have to... Call promptly at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock sharp. <sighs> oh, I'm just glad there's someone I can count on. <sighs> Dee, what happens afterwards? I mean, if you had your druthers and everything works out so Frank doesn't ask any more questions, what happens then? Roger, I can't even think about that right now. Well, Dee, please try. Look, I'm doing what you want me to do. I'm, I'm trying everything I can to help you. 
And I think that I deserve a little bit more than just to be pushed aside I don't afterwards. mean to push you aside. Well, then what do you want? I want us to be friends. Loving friends? Sure. Everything quiets down. That would be lovely. I think so. You think Jill's going to say anything? No. No, not a word. I talked to her this morning. All right, then everything's okay, then. Uh, Dee, I was just leaving myself. I've got a condolence call to make. I was going to offer to walk you for a couple of blocks, but I guess that's not a very good idea, is it? Not very. You know, I'd give anything in the world for the day that we can go out in public together and not have to hide anymore. Yeah, me too. Thank you for helping me. Any time. Look, why don't you go on and I'll uh, follow in a couple of minutes. Good. Now, don't forget, seven o'clock sharp. Seven o'clock sharp. You're not too disappointed. Almost any visitor is welcome here. Yeah, it certainly doesn't seem like a very pleasant place to be. And I'm sure you're not finding it very much fun. Fun? Well, in all fairness, Seneca, I think you've had your share of troubles in the last few months, starting with Nell's illness and continuing right up to the present. You've gone through better times, yeah. Well, Seneca, I've been uh, able to think about your situation a little more rationally lately. And I've come to realize how bad it's all been for you. I wasn't aware you cared. Well, I've been mulling over what I have to say tomorrow to the County Medical Society. And I'm sure they're going to ask me for my personal opinion along with my testimony. Now, what I would really like to be able to ask them is to have them not charge you with anything else in spite of your felony conviction. You would? Look, it would be an honest statement on my part. Now, I still don't agree with what you did from a medical standpoint. But I do understand why you felt you had to do what you did. And I think you've suffered enough. Now, if I tell them that, I'm sure that's going to carry a lot of weight. Yeah? I think it might. Look, I suppose one of the reasons that I've been able to understand what you've been going through lately is that I haven't had it that easy myself in the last few months. First with my father dying and losing my position at the hospital. What's all this about? What all this is about is that I would like to have an opportunity to return to Riverside Hospital under your supervision. To have a chance to prove that I deserve to be there both as a human being and as a surgeon. No deal, Roger. Seneca, I'm not thinking of it as a deal. I'm thinking of it in terms that you're a person in a lot of trouble whom I'm in a position to help. And I'm a person in a lot of trouble whom you're in a position to help. No. Look, if you think that you'd be compromising your, your moral codes, let me tell you that there's no moral code in this world that doesn't allow room for charity and forgiveness. Now, get this straight. I don't like being here. I don't like the idea of losing my license to practice medicine. And I especially don't like the sense that I brought a lot of this on myself. But one thing I find more distasteful than any of that is the idea of selling out to you. Selling out? Using me to weasel your way back to Riverside Hospital is something that'll never happen. 
Why do you always paint things in the worst possible light? Because it's the worst possible deal, just like you're the worst possible excuse for a human being. Well, you are really determined to get me, aren't you? I'm not going to be corrupted by you, if that's what you mean, yes. Well, what difference does it make? You don't care who you hurt. I don't mind seeing you hurt, if that's what you mean. But it's not just me, Seneca. It's everyone around you. Just like you hurt Nell when you insisted you go to Minnesota and take it away from what she wanted to do. That's enough. You didn't even care what happened to her. I don't want you discussing my wife. But it continues. You'll trample over me. You'll take away my medical career, just like you trampled all over Nell. Shut up! Did I hit a nerve? Guard! What's going on in here? I think your prisoner is about to be violent. Doctor? Get him out of here. Sure. Visit's over. Come on. Certainly. You go to the county medical board, you tell them anything you want to say, you do your worst. Believe me, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And let me get this point clear, mister. When I get through with you, you're never going to practice medicine in this state again. his life together. That was all a lie. I thought Liam was my son. But someone was coming in between them. She caused our breakup. This week, Natalie finds out the truth. Natalie didn't have another man's baby. Chad John. Oh, my God. Watch One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC, and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. To keep in balance after 50, I switched to a complete multivitamin with more. Only one a day women's 50 plus advantage has ginkgo for memory and concentration, plus support for bone and breast health. A great addition to my routine. One a day women's. Your whites start out with a bright future. Then over time become dull and lose their luster. New Tide Plus Bleach helps bring your whites back to bright in one wash, turning whitish to wow. Tide Plus Bleach. When is it okay to lose the cover up? When you can. Take the Special K Challenge and lose an inch from your waist in two weeks. So lose your cover up and show off your confidence. Design your plan at specialk.com. Who's coming and who's going? SoapNet has the status update on your favorite stars. On General Hospital, Bruce White's is back as gangster Anthony Zakara. At some turn of events. On The Young and the Restless, Emily O'Brien is saying goodbye to Genoa City. Another time? Daytime favorite Tamara Braun is Taylor on Days of Our Lives. Okay, I'll drink to that. And on One Life to Live, Roger Howarth is back in Landview. I have to be with my family. Keep up with the latest status updates on SoapNet. Yes? Is anybody there? Jill, could I talk to you for a minute, please? What is it, Dee? I wanted to thank you for not telling Frank last night. I told you I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, I know you did, but you had a good reason to. And to show my gratitude, I... I wanted to return this. Thank you, Dee. I know how much you hated Roger giving that to me. Mother wore this so many nights when she went out. Roger had no right to do anything with it, Dee. Technically, it belongs to me. I didn't know that. Really, I, I didn't know where it was from. I just figured that Roger bought it someplace. It's a very expensive necklace, Dee. My brother's not the kind of person that gives that sort of gift. Jill, I didn't come here for an argument. I got enough troubles of my own, okay? Yeah, I'm sure you do. I just want to tell you, I didn't know where the necklace was from. I never would have taken it if I knew it was your mother's. And I want to thank you for not telling Frank. I didn't tell because of Frank and the child. If he has to learn, I certainly don't want it to come from me. You're so cold. I appreciate you returning the necklace, Dee. You certainly don't expect me to go beyond that, do you? Especially when I know how you got it in the first place. This is the worst period of my life. I mean, you have to keep on digging away at me. Well, maybe it's because I'm not convinced that you are trying to get out of this mess. 
I am. Are you? Really? Jill, there's not very much that I can do. I mean, Roger can blow up the situation anytime he pleases. Dee, are you doing anything to stop him? Everything yeah. you can do? Yes, I am. Then how come he's constantly hanging out at Ryan's bar? Because I will not go over there. Jill, I'm desperately trying to find a way out of this. I think I got a solution. What is it? All right. I want to try to be the best possible wife I can be to Frank during the campaign. And then I'll just gradually slow things down with Roger. And then Frank will get elected to Congress. And then we'll go to Washington. And I can leave Roger behind. I can leave everything behind. Actually, that's uh, not a bad plan, Dee. See, there. Except it's based on an assumption. Of what? You were assuming that Roger is going to let you slow down things with him. I've really tried to slow things down a little. No, let me correct this. I have slowed things down a lot. Oh, well, that's not the impression that I've gotten from Roger. You know, you always think the worst of him. Well, maybe I had reason to. You know, you have always treated him miserably. When you treat someone miserably, they act miserably, and I know about that. Well, Dee, maybe I treat him that way because he deserves to be treated that way. In spite of what you're saying about Roger, he's been a dear and a good friend to me. Oh, I'm sure he has, Dee. Do you realize how hard it is for him to break up with me? But he's not doing anything. He's not doing anything to stop me from breaking away slowly from him. You're quite sure about that? Yes, I am quite sure of that. You know, my first memory of Roger is my father punishing him for stealing money from Faith's piggy bank. That's right, stealing from his own baby oh, sister. come on, you're making that up. Oh, Dee, I don't have to make up stories about my brother. I can tell you stories about him from next morning to the next night. Oh, please don't, okay? All right. I approve of your plan. But if you expect any part of that plan to depend on Roger, I suggest that you be very careful. Dee, if you trust my brother, you are going to be really sorry. You think you know everything, don't you? All right, I gave you back your necklace. At least I did that. And about the other thing, I trust Roger. You're going to be sorry, Dee. And unfortunately, so will Frank. Next, spend some time in Genoa City with the young and the restless. Later, see who's stirring up trouble in Pine Valley on All My Children. Only on SoapNet. Want more of your favorite soaps? That's great. Log on to abc.com slash daytime. Watch current full episodes of All My Children, General Hospital, and One Life to Live. Online critics love it. Plus, get exclusive sneak peeks of what's coming up next. Sounds like a thumbs up to me. Connect with other fans to discuss what's on your mind. I always want to hear what you have to say. And check out the 101 galleries to get an intimate look at the history of your favorite characters. That's the best news I've heard all day. Find it all now at abc.com slash daytime. My bra straps have a big job to do. I get these grooves right here. Say hello to the comfort strap from Playtex 18 Hour. All day comfort meets great fit and support. The weight of the world is no longer on my shoulders. Playtex, who knows you like we do. The Gerber generation is drumming up a love for yogurt. Gerber Yogurt Blend Snacks with a NutriProtect blend of essential vitamins, minerals, and the creamy deliciousness little ones love. Join the Gerber generation on Facebook. Be proud to admit your age. I'm 43. Only Rock Retinol Correction Deep Wrinkle Night Cream is clinically proven to give 10 years back to the look of skin, diminishing the look of even deep wrinkles. 10 years? I'll take that. Rock. We keep our promises. Mothers, for all you do. Cooking, cleaning, she needs a break. This day's for you. I love you, Mom. 90210 Mother's Day Marathon, Sunday from 8 to 12 on SoapNet. How many 
these secrets. You knew Madison was pregnant with my child for months. How many lies? Did you make a deal with Scott, yes or no? Can one marriage survive? Please tell me that we can get past this. No, Greenlee, we can't. Watch All My Children, weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 8 on SoapNet. People are talking about General Hospital's Sean Butler. Patricia Rich posted on Facebook, he is a good-looking bad boy with a good side. I'm really digging this one. Elizabeth Cross agrees. Oh, yes, he is a sexy man. Zucky Williams Ellis adds, I trust my eyes when I look at him, and they like what they see. Judy McCoy says, good choice, GH. And Kathleen Hahn sums it up. So damn hot. People are talking about General Hospital. Weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. We asked Bradford Anderson to name all the Spinelli nicknames he could remember. Go. Stone Cold Mr. Sir Pacino-esque one, uh, Maximista, blonde one, original blonde one, Prince Pectoral, Big Daddy Stone Cold, the goddess, the divine one, bad blonde one, the demented one, oh, um, the Valkyrie, um, the brusque lady of justice. I could be here for literally three days, probably. See who Spinelli will nickname next on General Hospital, weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. So what you're saying is, if Charlie Ferris gets all the district leaders to deliver the vote, he got it made. That's the way it looks. Uh oh, Frank, we don't even have to wait till election night. If what these numbers here say is true, we got the election won right now. <laughs> According to the polls and these projections here, if the election were held today, I'd be elected in what is commonly known as a landslide. Yeah. Oh, Frank. Frank, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Mind you, something could go wrong. Ah, come on. What could go wrong? Ah, I just wish we were all over with. I'd like to take Dee off to Washington and then see if things don't go a whole lot better for her. Oh, it wow. sounds wonderful to me. Hey, 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 where you been? You've been gone a long time. Oh, well, you know uh, Oriental grocery stores. No, I don't. <laughs> well, you see, they're so polite that it takes you hours to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> You're buying things for tomorrow night's dinner? Well, uh, let's just say Sheila's doing most of it, but, uh, well, I'm paying for more than half of it, so, so don't worry, okay? Well, I should hope so, seeing as how you're feeding practically the entire family. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I am going to do the egg rolls, and I'll set up things. Frank, you like egg rolls? Only if they're Irish. <laughs> Only if they're Irish. Oh. Okay, and now Sheila will prepare the duck, and uh, most of the heavy cooking, and then she'll bring it over at about uh, 6.30. Well, it's a little bit early for me, Dee. Well, um, we won't be eating just then. It takes about an hour to set up, and then we'll all sit down and eat. Well, how about 7.30? Sounds fine. You know, you might be looking forward to meeting Sheila. Let me tell you something. She is looking forward to meeting you. I mean, she's so excited, she's like a little kid. Ah, how come? What do you mean? Frank Ryan, you are a, you are a big-time politician. Oh. All right, so you're a city councilman, you're on your way to Congress. Mm -hmm. Now, most people are very impressed by that. Yeah, fortunately, the immediate family is immune. <laughs> uh, well, uh, tell Sheila I promise not to bite her. Hmm? Uh -huh. Okay, I'll tell her that. I know she'll feel a lot better. Well, I'm uh, going to go upstairs and check on little John. He'll be forgetting who I am. She makes it all sound so real, doesn't she? Oh, come on. Of course it's real. Hey, why shouldn't it be real? Now, you got to stop letting this thing gnaw away at your insides. That, that anonymous letter, I'm sure, was just a dirty trick. Just too many discrepancies, Doc. There could be an explanation. There could be. I just wish I thought there was. Well, as they say, the proof is going to be in the pudding. If there is a pudding. I'm having an awful hard time believing that Sheila is going to turn up. Oh, Frank, come on, she's gonna turn up. She is! Okay. Sheila, you 